In its quest to provide an open forum for discussion of controversial issues, this station allows hosts and their guests to express themselves without any significant censorship. You are advised that any view expressed by the host or their guest are not necessarily the views of the owners or management of Toginet Radio, Togi Entertainment, or the Owners Group, Inc. Motherhood Incorporated proudly presents Military Mom Talk Radio live on toginet.com. Co-hosted by Robin Boyd and Sandra Beck, the owner of Motherhood Incorporated. Military Mom Talk Radio is here with a powerful platform for women to discuss their ideas, issues, and concerns with respect to the military lifestyle. Military Mom Talk Radio encourages you to share your experiences of being a military wife and mother. This show is dedicated to educating your family about the many resources that are available available in both the public and private sector and we'll be sharing helpful information from women all over the world we'll cover everything military from helping a family member cope with post-traumatic stress disorder to navigating government programs dealing with family issues to the struggles of deployment along with being a working mother both in and out of the home this is military mom talk radio and here are your hosts sandra beck and robin boyd Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd today. And, Robin, we got a barn burner, man. There's just people coming and going on the show today. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, I've got my sweatshirt on. i got my tea. I'm ready to go. We've got all kinds of all kinds of things to talk about. I know. It sounds like a joke if I said, you know, a pastor, a quilter, and an Indian band walked into a bar. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that would kind of sum up today's show. <laughs> We really do have diversity, but, you know, isn't that what America's all about? We've got a little bit of everything. Love it. Well, you know, if we can make a pastor and quilting sound entertaining and fun, then we really did our job today. I think we're going to have to work extra hard. <laughs> See, that's, that's the thing. When you know Pastor Dave, then we know it's entertaining and fun. He's a great guy. That's true. That's true. He has been on a couple of times and done blessings for the troops at Christmas and Thanksgiving and maybe Memorial Day. I can't remember. I don't think we, I think we run uh, those things you make. What do you call them? Tribute shows? The, yeah, the the tribute shows or the um, encore type shows. You mean? That's right. That that's right. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. I just come here to host. Well, I love those <laughs> compilations because it's sometimes with an encore, it's wonderful to re re uh, visit with somebody. But I think sometimes the uh, compilations give a little bit of uh, information on everybody. We have so many interesting guests on this show, Sandra. We're just getting everywhere, aren't we? I know, and it just, like, you know, cuts out the boring spots or the place where I make jokes that the sponsors don't like. <laughs> we do. We're hitting, like, what do we get in Ireland? I mean, I didn't even know there was an iTunes Ireland. I mean, sorry, Ireland, but please. I mean, I know. Well, when Emily gets there, she'll tune us in and she'll tell all of the people in the pub all about us. <laughs> I know. I think we're picked up by, like, nine or, nine or ten now different uh, iTunes country affiliates, which is really great. And, you know, I guess I'm naive. I kind of thought you go to iTunes.com, you go to the little store, you pick up your podcast, and that's it. But I guess in different countries, you only have different access to, to certain things. So No, that's we're... only in New Hampshire, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Hey, how's Doris? Is Doris with us? I'm here. Hi, Doris. I haven't Hi, talked Robin. to you in a week. <laughs> Well, Doris had a big weekend, man. She was out doing some praying with the Holy Rollers. You want to tell us what you went to? <laughs> it was uh, my church's yearly baptismal event. Oh, my. Yeah. I didn't go. That sounds <laughs> exciting, though. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it's what moving. What a celebration. It's moving, definitely. Mm, mm. And how joyous for everybody to be a part of this one person or this one fa or these families, if you do it in, right. in a group, um, what a joyous occasion! And to make it that celebratory is just awesome. Yeah, it, it, it is, and it, it, it does um, it does touch your heart for sure. Mm, mm. Where is this, Doris? Which um, parish are you a part of? It's actually here where uh, I live at in Acton, California. Uh -huh. It's the Active Faith Bible Church. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. I'm going to give them a plug. Yeah, we're talking about them. <laughs> I know. We're, we're putting on their major competitor, though. Pastor Dave's coming <laughs> on, you know, segment two and three. So we're going to have, like, the Holy Roller Wars coming up. How many <laughs> uh, churches are there in Acton itself? 
I don't know, a hundred. <laughs> they're just, I mean, really? there's only one McDonald's in like nine churches, you know, so I guess we need a lot of saving. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> we have one congregate. well, one congregational. We have one Catholic church. And then we do have a couple of either um, other kinds of faith-based kinds of churches. and um, But we have pretty much one in one. <laughs> Well, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I love having all these different different places for everybody. Um, but, Doris, let's get to your news minute, the okay. woman on the street. What did you come up with for us this week? Well, my news you can use uh, for all our mother military mothers out there in the United States and throughout the world. I have uh, from the O'Reilly Factor at Fox News, they teamed up with the Wounded Warriors Project for another big money-raising auction. Bill Riley and his fellow workers are looking, always looking for ways to raise money for our troops and their families. Uh, recently, O'Reilly raised over a million dollars for the Fisher House, which is a place where uh, families can stay while the uh, wounded uh, warrior is being treated. And they've also raised hundreds of thousand dollars for other military projects. And this particular one is a real head spinner. What they've done, what Bill has done is he's gotten uh, the five living presidents. That's President Carter, both of the Bush presidents, President Clinton and President Obama, to sign three of the Wounded Warrior logo posters. And as far as uh, the O'Reilly Group, they've researched to see if any uh, existing document has five uh, living president signatures. And uh, supposedly uh, they said that there is no such document. So that makes these posters historical pieces. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, the first one is up for auction. And I checked on it. They, uh, the last bidding I saw was for $46,000. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and uh, the auction ends September 26th, and they will announce the uh, winner on the O'Reilly Factor, which is on Fox News. Yeah. Now, they know that uh, uh, Wounded Warriors and the O'Reilly people know that this particular auction is not for, you know, the everyday people like you and me. So the Wounded Warrior people have uh, put together another program where for a donation of $25 or more, you can get a beautiful facsimile of this poster, which That's I think is really, really nice. Neat. Yeah, so Wait, anybody, and, you know, can have, you know, to be able to show their kids and so forth. So anyway. Uh, uh, Warrior website, though, I want to make sure we know how to yes, find this. Yes, it's uh, to see the auction, you have yeah. to go to BillOReilly.com. Okay. Now, there's a little trick here, and I did it myself so I could uh, share this with everybody. If you want to go to the auction just to see how it's going, you will have to have a credit card on file. Oh. But, oh, yeah, but you don't have to use it. I did it because there was no way I was going to bid, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so, uh, but I did put a credit card up. And I got access to see what was going on at the auction. So it's no big deal, in other words, if you That's want to really participate. Neat. And what about the posters, Doris? Where can we find those posters? That's also at the auction site oh, on Bill okay. Riley because okay. uh, BillRiley.com has teamed up with Wounded Warriors. So the, the links are all there for the various uh, auctions and the poster. There was a recent event uh, about that Wounded Warrior put on down in the in the Florida area. There was a lot of pictures on uh, Bobby O'Brien's blog that I that I follow. They had a gr a big event and races and all kinds of stuff. It was a wonderful thing. They are just a, a wonderfully uh, busy organization. Yes. Yeah. I like they're one of my favorite because they have so many interesting people that are supporting them like Gary Sinise who is one of my favorite people. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go to uh Military Mom Talk Radio's Facebook page you can find um our we have liked Wounded Warriors so that'll be a direct link right over to their page so that everyone can like them too. Well, and we like Fisher House. We had Fisher House on our yeah. show a while back. The the people Aww. from Fisher House, they're a great organization. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of them. I mean, speaking of great, um, uh, you know, kind of great organizations, great things, 
Uh, we have one of our fans on the show with us today who actually is a quilter and who makes quilts for the soldiers. Uh, Sally, are you there? I am. Hi, you Sally. are. Where are you calling in from? Yarmouth Port Mass on the Cape. You are out on the Cape, so we're going to call you when you're not having a hurricane. (laughs) (laughs) But it's a good place to wrap up in blankets in her house if you do, because she makes lots of beautiful quilts. So tell us a little bit about the quilts you make and what you do with them. Well, I have made a total of four quilts now for the Veterans Administration, one of which... um, I just sent out, it goes usually to the vet hospitals for wounded warriors who have, you know, come back from overseas and they're recouping here in the, in the U.S. And that I got... Is so exciting. How long does it take you to make one of these quilts? Um, probably about a month. Wow. And, uh, and this is all just out of the goodness of your heart. You're not funded by anybody. You just sew your little heart out. Exactly. Buy the fabric, do your thing, and, and donate these. Exactly. That is an amazing thing. Now, for those of you listening today, you can look on our website, Military Mom Talk Radio, and see a sample of some of Sally's quilts. I mean, they are beautiful works of art, and there's a lot of people around the country that have time and make quilts, and what a great, uh, what a great way to share your art. How did you know where to give them, Sally? I actually got the idea and the plug from one of the ladies in my quilt guild I belong to. So should we put a challenge out nationwide to all the quilters out there to make some quilts and then donate them? Absolutely. How would you recommend they find in their local areas? Or, Rob, do you have any idea? You're creative. Um, How would you find out where to bring these quilts? Either I would say go to the Veterans Administration because they do have outreach. Um, The um, Women's Auxiliary often will be able to do this for you. Um, I also would check in with your local fabric stores. They really are wonderful. Um, I also want to make sure we know where to send people looking for Sally in particular, so we want to send them to Sally's Quilting Corner dot blogspot dot com or Sally's Scrapbooking dot blogspot dot com. Blah, blah. <laughs> That's a lot of blah blah That's blah. That's a lot. That's a lot of blah blah blah. Well, we're going to take this blah 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 to break. My name is Sandra Beck. I'm the host of Military Mom Talk Radio, along with Robin Boyd. Our reporter on the street is Doris Rivas Brecky, and we want to thank Sally Cromberg for coming on the air with us today. And check out her quilts on our show site, MilitaryMomTalkRadio.com. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Do holidays and celebrations get you down and leave you feeling frazzled? Then join Sandy Fowler and her guests on Heartfilled Holidays every Monday at noon, 11 a.m. Central on toginet.com. Sandy will help you discover the secrets to having the celebrations you've always dreamed of while adding fun and meaning to your life. From Valentine's Day to Christmas to special family events, Sandy Fowler will show you how to put the fun and meaning back into those special days by taking a look at what we can do to turn the upcoming holidays into cherished memories and show us how to allow it to intertwine with everyday life. For more on the show, Sandy, and to receive Sandy's Holiday Happiness Booklet, go to HeartfilledHolidays.com. Then get set to discover the secrets to creating happy holidays and happy everydays by joining Sandy Fowler and her guests on Heartfilled Holidays every Monday at noon Eastern Standard Time on Toginet.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for you to be a rock star. Get ready to rock with Rock Talk and Craig Deswalt and learn how to achieve rock star status in your industry. Every Tuesday afternoon at 2, 1 Central on Toginet.com. Craig Deswald is the creator of the Rockstar System for Success. Craig will share easy tips and strategies on how entrepreneurs and businesses can use outside-the-box marketing strategies to stand out from their competition. 
Each high energy show will feature interviews with celebrity rock stars as well as business rock stars. For more on Craig, the show, and the rock star marketing boot camps, check out the website, Craig Doeswalt, D-U-S-W-A-L-T dot com. So you can learn how to be perceived as an expert and celebrity in your field. So more people come to you to buy your services and products. Then, get ready to be a rock star with Rock Talk and Craig Doeswalt. Tuesday afternoons at 2, 1 Central on Tuggynet.com. Put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Help a sound, put your name at the top of his list, and a statue of liberty started shaking. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on Toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck. I'm here with Robin Boyd, Doris Rivas Brecky, and we are going to welcome Pastor Dave because we're just having Church of Palooza. What do you say, Robin? I think so, too. <laughs> we're going to have, like, big, big faith things going on today. But, you know, it's really important because recently, as you guys know, I lost my mom, and faith was such a huge part, uh, along with Robin and Doris gluing me back together on a daily basis, um, was such a huge part of me keeping going and, and handling the things that I had to keep handling because life does go on. And one of the things that happens, you know, as we all know, Doris and Robin, is that when our loved one goes on deployment, the whole family has to shift and dynamics change. And, you know, I hear a lot of times moms in my neighborhood and moms in my circle go, oh, you know, military mom, they're just, you know, like a single mom. And they're really not because, you know, as a single mom, I don't wonder if my husband is coming home or I don't wonder if my loved one is going to come back, you know, or if they got shot or if they're hurt or they're cold. I mean, I may wish that on the (laughs) ex-husband, but I'm not, you know, there's a different set of stressors that goes on with a family when a family member goes on to deployment. Definitely. Absolutely. And I think you you have that constant nagging, burning angst all the time. And how you you separate that and get on with your day is very difficult. And I think faith does indeed carry you through many times. Now, Rob, when you're when Stephen was uh, overseas, how did you handle it? Well, actually, I was with him while he was there. I was I went was with another guy, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Stephen, <laughs> goofed up that one. Yep, but um, there there were many similarities because it was not much not it was soon after he returned home uh, that we were we were. Uh, together, but anyway, we had. Um, I think what it's di- what's difficult is that um, not knowing where, because especially back then, we didn't have email. We didn't have the quick responses, at least that families can have now. Obviously, there are some areas that some uh, military personnel can't stay in contact. And actually, one of um, my husband's uncles was in um, some secret areas that he couldn't write home and talk about. So those kinds of things are difficult, but at least now there is email for people to get a message or to be able to uh, connect a little more readily than sitting and waiting for months for that letter to come. So, you know, it's funny, Rob, you bring that up because what I see with the military moms that I hang with and the and the sisters and the brothers and the, you know, and the girlfriends is that whole, uh, like, ability to get email, it's almost like a catch-22 sometimes because mm-hmm. it is easy and it is fast. So then when it doesn't come through, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like two days go by or three days go by or five days go by, you know, all of a sudden it's like now there's like that huge it's like a different worry. You know, it's like, well, we, you know, it's been easy to communicate so far. Well, now he hasn't. He hasn't talked to us in three days or five days. And now, you know, it's, it's just, I think it's tough any way you slice it. And I've said this before. It's really hard on the military personnel's psyche in that years ago, like in Steve's time, he was out there and the only thing on his mind was his mission. He didn't have to sit down at the end of his day in a 
weekends or wherever he was, and then talk domestic stuff. He just really focused on the things he needed to focus on, and that was it for the months or the, the amounts of time. It's very difficult for military people now to to pull their brain back into a, a domestic conversation and then have to go back out and, and conduct themselves in the missions that, they, that they're needed and required to do. That's really, really hard for that military person to keep switching gears in their brain. Really it hard. Is. It is. Well, and I see it with our home front military families. You know, when you look at, you know, uh, post-deployment issues or redeployment issues, you know, it's like these moms and, and dads, too, because there's a lot of dads that wives have deployed, you know, they're they're used to doing their thing. They've got their schedule mm-hmm. set, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you know, the service member comes home, and everybody's got to shift again. So, you know, it's a really big, constant adjustment. And that's one of the reasons, you know, for all these reasons, uh, Doris and Robin, this is why I invited Pastor Dave to come come on the show today because he's prior military. He understands this stuff, but he's also a pastor and he's very faith-based. And I want him to teach us today some things that can help us in the management of our families when one of our loved ones is deployed and how do we handle our kids? And he's got kids, so we're just going to put all that responsibility on you, (laughs) Pastor Dave. Solve the world's problems. (laughs) Are you there, Dave? I'm here. Uh, Good to talk to you, Sandra. Yeah, thank you for coming on the show today. Oh, gladly. You know, one of the things that's on my heart that, uh, you know, the military, the U.S. military is the best in the world. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. And uh, sometimes we we leave so much pressure on our families back home as we go overseas, whether it's for, you know, a long tour of duty during a wartime or even during peacetime, the loneliness and, you know, the frustration of having to raise a family by yourself while your husband or your wife is deployed. And one of the things that I was thinking about when you asked me to come on the show is this. What, the reasons that the military is great is because, number one, they have great power. You know, it's the best aircraft, the best ships, the best tanks, best missiles, everything. And then secondly, the training is great. I mean, it's the absolute best in the world. Our discipline is great. We understand authority. You go through basic training or officer candidate school and you're broken down, you know, to the bare bones and then you're built up in its authority structure. And then the, the fourth thing is that we understand what our mission is, and the mission is great, and the mission is usually well understood. And think about how in Vietnam it wasn't well understood, and we had big problems. But when we're, you know, if we're in a war on U.S. territory, man, we understand our mission, you know, and, and we will fight to the end. But with our families, we don't do such a good job of that. You know, there are too many of us, even men and women of faith, who don't understand the power they have in God. They just don't understand it. Um, There are too many of us that don't have that comfort that we should have. And then the second thing is our training isn't always so great. You know, some of us, um, maybe you're new in marriage and suddenly your husband or wife is gone quickly and you haven't learned to adapt to military life. And we haven't trained that spouse, and we haven't trained the kids the way that we should of how to handle the, their mission. And, you know, they don't understand all the things that are going on. And so one of the things that's on my heart when I deal with military friends and families is, is for them to help train their families for that time when they're when they're going to be gone. You know, and they have to be prepared for that because that's what you signed up for. And, uh, you know, I've always found it a little frustrating that, you know, the military hasn't always done a great job of preparing families and that, you know, that are going to remain behind. It is. I mean, it's like I love the way you put it, Dave, because, you know, we talk a lot about the military family and we talk about the loved one deploying, you know, but kind of everybody goes along, you know, with that loved one um, because it just causes such a huge shift that really no other family that's that's really in the United States, you know, domestically handles that situation. And you're right. We got to train. We train our troops. We need to train our kids. And, you know, we train our kids in faith. So where do we begin? Well, as far as the kids are concerned, you know, a couple of things come to my mind. And that's, first of all, that spouse that's left behind, whether it's the wife or it's the husband, either way, you know, in my mind, that person, uh, that single parent now for the next year, 
for however long it's going to be, their faith has to be strong for those kids. You know, how, how are you going to teach your kids strong faith if you don't have it? So that's number one, is their faith has to be strong so that you can teach your kids to trust in God. And then the second thing, and this is real big in my mind, is those children need to know, as soon as they're of the age of understanding, they need to know the importance of what dad is doing or what mom is doing. They need to have pride in what they're doing while they're gone for that year. Um, They need to understand that what mom or dad does is important. You know, my dad is a hero. He's defending our country. Or my mom is a hero. She's defending our country, and she's keeping us free. And if that child understands the importance of that, you know, as they get to the age of understanding, you know, obviously a two-year-old isn't going to have the understanding a 12-year-old is. But by the time you're 6, 8, 10, 12 years old, they've got to have pride in what their parent is doing because if that time comes that that chaplain and commander is knocking on your door with a death certificate, you know, that child better at least have, you know, a foundation of faith in God that, you know, we're talking about eternity We're not just talking about this immediate life. And then secondly, they need to have pride that what dad did or what mom did was of great importance, and it made a difference in the world. You know, I'd much rather lose a loved one to a war effort keeping people free than to a drunk driver driving down the street carelessly. You know, that that pride and that purpose of life, um, you know, it's going to keep even a child going. You know, it's going to help the spouse a little bit. It's going to help the kids a bit. And I just think that it's important to teach those kids that right from the beginning of how important it is what mom and dad are doing. I think, Dave, that's so important because, you know, a lot of times what I see with our military kids is is a little bit of confusion of, like, mom's here, mom's gone, dad's here, dad's gone. You know, there's so many things going on. And then, you know, the parent that's left behind, if you will, you know, they have to manage so much on their plate. And, you know, to give our children, you know, even just this basic instruction in what mom and dad are doing and, you know, that it's important and it's vital and it's something they should be proud of and that, you know, in supporting that parent, you know, the kids are doing their hero job, too, um, is a really big part of that. And I think, you know, what you said about the primary caregiver's faith being strong, whether it's a grandpa, a grandma, an aunt, or an uncle, because we've got families where both parents are deployed. But if that faith is strong, we can share that down uh, with our children. We're going to come back after the break with Pastor Dave Maser of Shepherd of the Hills, Antelope Valley. He's going to continue to walk us through how we can use faith to help our children and our families handle deployment. My name is Sandra Beck. I'm here with Robin Boyd and Doris Rivas Brecky. Check us out on iTunes. Check us out on Military Mom Talk Radio. There's a lot of podcasts of prior shows that have to do with PTSD and other family issues. We'll have Pastor Dave back after the break. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Get ready for the Not-So-Soccer Mom, Tuesday afternoons at 1 Eastern, noon Central, on Toginet with Jill Hickey. You name it, from politics to pop culture to Jill's search for the perfect bronzer and chicken salad. The Not-So-Soccer Mom will weigh in on it all. The sentence, I have no opinion about that, is one that Jill has never uttered. Everybody In the early 90s, Jill finally decided to put her thoughts, opinions, mom advice, love of pop culture, hummus, and Starbucks, working out, cosmetic shopping, and politics into an actual website, and thus NotSoSoccerMom.com was born. Shortly after her fourth child, a boy, Jerome, now she's really got tons of topics to share with you. This is Laugh Out Loud Funny, and we're not kidding. What's a loud Nebraska girl who lived in Little Rock for many years and now is up in the Northeast doing, chronicling her opinions on everything? The wheels aren't off yet, but it's close. It's the Not-So-Soccer Bomb with Jill Hickey. Tuesday afternoons at 1 Eastern, noon Central on toginet.com. Renowned and gifted psychic medium, Sylvia Rossi, explores the mysteries of this life, the afterlife, and the unseen world that surrounds us all in the show called Make Contact. With Sylvia Rossi, Wednesdays at 2, 1 p.m. Central here on Toginet. Sylvia Rossi with her special guests and other fellow psychics invite you to call in and make contact with the world beyond 
and get answers to your questions. Psychic medium Sylvia Rossi has been sharing her gift professionally for the last 17 years. Sylvia has made it her mission to help individuals and families understand their eternal connection to loved ones that have passed on, bringing relief and comfort to countless souls who have been touched by her gift. She's had the privilege of meeting and working with many psychologists who continue to recommend their clients to her when conventional methods have failed. Now it's your turn to make contact with host and psychic medium Sylvia Rossi. Wednesdays at 2, 1 p.m. Central on Toginet.com. There ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on Toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hello, everyone. It's Robin Boyd here with Sandra Beck and a very busy Military Mom Talk Radio today. uh, We are right now chatting with Pastor Dave Maser. He's the pastor at the Shepherd of the Hill Church, Antelope Valley. And I wanted to make sure to put um, Pastor Dave's website out there. It's www.shepherd, S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D, dash, A-V, dot, com. And I, I kind of have something cute to share. Um, I had, uh, actually, Sandra, while your mom was ill, I didn't talk to you for a day, and I got really worried. And I found Pastor Dave on Facebook and shot him a little message and said, Have you talked to Sandra recently? I'm worried. Please say a prayer. And, Pastor Dave, do you get a lot of um, media-driven um, comments and, and requests? Prayer requests? <laughs> I do. In fact, uh, recently I told our congregation that even among them, I get more contact from our church on Facebook now than I do through my normal uh, Isn't that uh, church something? website email. I text my pastor every once in a while, and I, my my daughter was so cute. I happened to mention it to her one day, and she wasn't asking me about the situation that I was I was uh, asking for a prayer for. It was your your minister texts. <laughs> <laughs> and she just was floored. She wasn't saying, Mom, is everything okay? It was, wow, your minister sends text messages. Cool. <laughs> so it really is a whole different um, world in, in in reaching your congregation. Is It takes a whole different, different kind of talent that I think the seminary probably prepared you for, correct? <laughs> That's right. You know, I mean, our, uh, you know, our main church, our home church, uh, one of their websites, callonjesus.com, um, Dudley Rutherford, his sermon every Saturday night um, is broadcast around the world on the Internet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as we go through the chat, there are people from all over the world, and it's just unbelievable how the gospel is preached uh, in other countries and on other continents. And, uh, you know, it's just a very effective way to uh, preach the gospel beyond your small town. Well, and for those of you like me who don't do well getting up on Saturday, Sunday mornings, to be able to tune in, you know, and pick it up online or pick it up at a different time, to me is just, I mean, that's just the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it is beautiful, but I also know that obvi- it, it really does bring the Word of God uh, uh, to your heart when you are sharing it with other people. And if you're not able to do it locally, at least being able to connect uh, virtually really is a blessing. But this does bring up something that I was thinking about last segment that I wanted to ask you, Pastor Dave. Media and virtual connections being what they are, this also must expose some of the uh, rough things that are happening to military people, to children who may not be able to digest it well, and knowing that their parents are out there and then seeing the 6 o'clock news how do you help children or young people 
sort of feed, uh, feed through all of that and be able to uh, assimilate it and be comforted knowing that hopefully their parents still are doing okay. Yeah, you know, I think that's an important point you just raised. I mean, as much as I enjoy the Internet and connectivity around the world, um, there's there's still nothing that's going to beat real live relationship. And you also make me think back to one of my first points when I talked about our power is great, our training is great, our discipline is great, and our mission is great. Um, a, a young child does not need to know or hear the political arguing over every conflict. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some of the con- some of the arguments on television, and this is true of every single news channel. You know what? A young child just isn't ready for that. They want to know that mom or dad is fighting in, in a war or a conflict or defending the nation, and what they're doing is heroic. All politics aside, it's still heroic. And to listen to you know, people politically arguing about should we be there or not, that's something better left to the adults uh, to decide and to think about and to vote on. But for that child, man, they're just not ready for that. And, uh, you know, no child should be caught up in the middle of, of all of the politics behind it. Um, so now, Dave, wait. when, you know, because this does happen, I mean, I see even my own kids, you know, my one kid got in trouble, the little one, Wacky, got in trouble for showing these YouTube videos to the Girl Scouts when he was, what, four. I mean, they get on and they find this stuff and they see this stuff, you know, for when they get scared or when they get nervous or upset or they wonder, you know, where's daddy or they see some, you know, I think of one of my friend's kids, see some particularly graphic image that sticks with them and they're five, six, seven, eight years old. What do you do from a faith perspective? How do you use Jesus? How do you use God? How do you use the hereafter? You know, can you give us some tools and some explanations that a parent could give to a child to allay their fears? Okay. One of the things that comes to my mind is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and, uh, you know, this is a favorite favorite chapter when it comes to talking about uh, things like war. And this is the passage of wisdom that uh, there was a song years ago even talking about this. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build. And then listen to these words. There is a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. You know, so when, when something terrible does happen, you know, for that child that does lose their dad or their mom, you know, it's important to understand the eternal perspective that life is far more than just what's here on earth. Skipping ahead in that chapter, verse number 11 says this, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to, to the end. I know there is nothing better for men than to be happy and to do, do good while they live. And I love that expression, he has set eternity in the hearts of men. You know, there's an eternal understanding, whether you believe in God or not, you, you just have to long for and know that there's something beyond this life here on earth, which could end before the day is out. I mean, you have to have that understanding, and there's just something within us that longs for that, longs for knowing, well, what is that? You know, what does happen after here? And I think that it's important for a child, uh, especially whose, you know, mom or dad is in the military or the police or fire department, anything along that line, for them to understand that whatever happens today, whatever happens tomorrow, there's more to life than just life here on earth. And when they have that eternal perspective, then these other things are going to get a better balance, a better perspective on, you know, how temporary life is. You know, because like I said, even without the military, you're still liable to get gunned down by a drive-by shooting, a a drunk driver, cancer, all these things. And if you're going to face life, you know, in any kind of rational way, you have to put it into this eternal perspective to help you sustain the day now dave when i was a little girl my mom she's being catholic taught me to say the hail mary and taught me to say the hour of father when i was nervous or anxious or afraid and i couldn't sleep you know and she would say well just say your prayers over and over you know until you fall asleep 
What kind of tools, you know, from a prayer or faith perspective, you know, can a mother or a father share with their kids at bedtime? Because that's a lot of times where a lot of these fears come up. Okay. I think uh, one of the important things is to understand that, you know, God is wanting to hear your heart, you know, not just, you know, reciting words of a memorized prayer, but he's wanting to hear your heart. When you're afraid, whether it's of a movie that was too violent or too graphic, or it's because of a news report where soldiers are dying, God wants to hear your heart, and he wants to comfort you. And I would encourage them to express their heart to God and to just be real honest with God. The other thing for both the parent and for the child, I would encourage that parent to start praying. Uh, James chapter 1, verse number 5 says this, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all who ask without finding fault, and it will be given to him. I mean, how great is it that we can ask God for wisdom, and he will give it. I mean, he won't find fault. I mean, that's one promise that he has, that he is going to give you wisdom if you're sincerely praying for that. And I just think that's a prayer for, you know, I think that's a prayer for every parent to, you know, go through whatever the terrible twos, you should be praying for wisdom at that point, you know. Um, you know, so parenting, Dave, for somebody, part. Dave, for somebody like me who was raised Catholic and really only knows the rote memory pairs, can you quickly give us a, an example? Like with one of your kids, you got two gorgeous, great little kids. Mm-hmm. You know, when you say God wants to hear your heart, can you give me an example of what you would say with your kid or ask them? You know, to you know, guide us for you know, rote memory prayer people like most of us are. What do we do? Well, I mean, like I said, I mean, what's on their heart, um, I'll probe them after, you know, after a prayer. If they're leading prayer at dinner, um, and if I start to hear the same thing every single day, it's like, okay, you wrote your own prayer, but you memorized it, and you're saying the same thing every day. You know, and so I'll just press them on what's going on in your life that you should be praying about. You know, what friends, at, you know, at school, at church, what in the neighborhood – should you be praying for? What things going on in our lives? What things going on in the news should should we be praying about? And they're very creative. I mean, they'll express what's on their heart. I mean, every child wants to talk. I mean, think about every single thing they do. Look, Mommy, look, Daddy, look what I did. You know, and they did something that wasn't even hugely significant in, in eternity. Well, they certainly want to express the things that are important. And so I just would encourage them to, uh, you know, Express what's on your heart, and they've done an amazing job of it. I haven't had to ask them to do that in a long time because I notice now that, man, they really do. You know, a friend, a loved one, and, you know, a relative is going through a hard time. Without telling them, they'll pray for that person. And uh, it's just a blessing to see that, to see them grow in their prayer life. Well, and Dave, we know we're always excited to have you on the show. You have not let us down with some outstanding information uh, regarding faith and our kids that are in the military. We have had Pastor David Maser from Shepherd of the Hills, Antelope Valley, be our guest today. He is outstanding. You can check him out on his website. That will be featured on our site, MilitaryMomTalkRadio.com. When we come back, we have a special surprise. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Homeschooling? Have questions? Get your pen and paper ready. It's the sociable homeschooler, Vivian McNinney. Fridays at 5, 4 Central on Toginet.com. After a handsome blue-eyed Texan fell in love with Vivian at the Victoria Station in London, she found herself at DFW Airport with a tiny suitcase and a snazzy little duffel bag. Well, 25 years later, she is now happily married to that blue-eyed cowboy. They have four grown children, ages 24 to 18, who became willing guinea pigs when she unwittingly stumbled upon the world of homeschooling. Wildflower Academy flourished for 15 years. They survived and thrived, and you can too. Vivian will be covering a wide range of issues that face homeschoolers. What do you do with kids in the summer? How to set up your one-room schoolhouse? How obedience is paramount? And what to do with those snakes? Plus, you'll be sharing ideas and insights that she gleaned from other homeschoolers. So join us for an engaging hour with a sociable homeschooler, Vivian McNinney. 
Friday afternoons at 5, 4 Central on Toginet.com. Want to be challenged in a powerful way to leap beyond what you think is possible? Then join us Mondays for the Leah Jansen Show. Every Monday at 10 a.m., 9 a.m. Central on Toginet.com with Leah Jansen. Listen live as life coach Leah uses her coaching skills to give you the tools you need to take action and create momentum. You are encouraged to call in and share your greatest fears, challenges, and obstacles. And then listen as Leah obliterates those barriers to success. For more on Leah and the show, check out her website, leahjansen.com. That's Leah, L-E-A-H, J-A-N-T-Z-E-N.com. Spend one hour with Leah, and you'll be captivated by her energy, enthusiasm, and magnetism. You'll quickly become addicted to her positive attitude and make-it-happen mentality. Ready for a life-changing, mood-altering show? Then get ready for Leah Jansen and listen live to The Leah Jansen Show every Monday morning at 10 a.m., 9 a.m. Central on Toginet.com. put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Help the sound, put your name at the top of his list and a stand. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Welcome back, everyone. We've got such a great show for you. And if you have missed any of this show or any of our other shows, we encourage you to go to www.militarymomtalkradio.com. You'll find podcasts there, as you will find on our Toganet show page. Podcasts are a great way to spend that hour at the uh, at the gym or on the beach or wherever life does take you, and our lives do take us to many places. Sandra, one of the things that we were talking about um, this afternoon was prayer, but also um, I know so many times that meditation element uh, becomes very, very important, and we have someone to share with you and, and all of our listeners. Um, we have found that yoga and meditation are increasingly becoming tools of the Veterans Administration, which is adopting body-mind approaches for soldiers struggling with the heavy toll of serving in battle. One Iraqi war veteran relates that the music of renowned mantra singers Deva Premal and Meaton, along with other stress-reducing tools, helped him to rebuild from the traumas of war. And I have a quote from this gentleman saying, I am an Iraqi freedom veteran. It was really rough for me to come back to try to create a so-called normal life for myself. Now I practice the meditation every day, and I'm doing so much better today as a result of Deva and Neaton's CDs. Their music has been a miracle in his, this gentleman's life. It is soothing, calming, healing, beautiful. It is a miracle. And Deva Premel and Meaton are launching their U.S. tour and new album entitled Password. We have Deva Premel and Meaton here with us. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Where are you calling from today? We're in uh, Salt Lake City right now. We just uh, arrived a few hours ago. We have a sound check uh, uh, in an hour or so, and then we have our concert tonight, and then we move on. We're we're on a tour bus through America right now. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Where have have you, has this taken taken you um, this this album taken you on a spiritual level? I, I, I know obviously it's, you're you're sharing so much, but where in has this begun in your hearts, and where it, is it taking you in your hearts? I mean, it all began really uh, twenty years ago when we met in India and uh, in an ashram where we. We're there to meditate and to, to, to grow and to explore our gifts. And those gifts uh, included music, actually, Mitten's more than mine. And I, I became like a apprentice to the, to, the, uh, to the art of playing music for spiritual gatherings, you know, where you use the music as a tool to come to a silent space rather than an entertainment. And 
and there it was born, the seed was born. And then since then, I think it's 18 years now, we've been okay. traveling every, every year, 25 countries a year, more or less, with no real home base. Just traveling the world and sharing the the benefits of this beautiful, amazing medicinal music that the mantras, you know, bring. And have you found um, new people that are now taking your music elsewhere, or are you finding that you just can't keep up with with all? You, for 18 years, this is just a phenomenal uh, gift that you've given the world. So I can only imagine that more and more people are are bringing your music and your um, spirit to other people as well. Well, when we began our journey, which is like David said, about 18 years ago. We would be playing to maybe 20 or 30 people in a meditation room, you know. Mm -hmm. But those people brought the quality of peacefulness with them. So we were playing in a very beautiful atmosphere from, from the word go, you know. And then more and more people just began coming and more and more people um, started to discover the benefits of, uh, of taking a little time out from, from the life that... Uh, we lead, which is pretty stressful and quite often isolated. And uh, these moments of coming together in a spiritual community to sing and chant enhance everybody's life. It doesn't, it has nothing to do with, you know, being exclusive to yoga people or anything like that. Sure, we, sure. We play prisons, you know. We, we thought to ourselves, where can we play to share the mantras with those who you would think would most need them? And we looked at each other and we said, we have to go to prisons and play for prisoners, see what happens and see if anything happens. And um, so we went to, 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 we've been to prisons now and we've played to, the, to people who are uh, very open to spirituality. And, and, uh, and I'm so happy to hear what you said of, about the Iraqi uh, veteran, you know, that... that uh, we, we have to deal with, we, ha we cannot ignore our inner self anymore. Mm -hmm. We've tried for millennium, but this is a different time in, in, in history, and uh, we're all growing, we're all opening now. It's a, it's a wave that's happening. That's like, you know, from soldiers to prisoners to regular people. In, in Moscow, we had 3,000 people come to sing with us in oh, Russia. Oh, my word. Yeah, That's it's amazing. So beautiful. What really brings someone into? Um, and I, I, before I even ask this question, I just want to let our listeners know that they'll be able to hear more of you this week uh, on our on another Toganet show. You'll be visiting Lisa Kamen on Harvesting Happiness Talk Radio, which airs Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. on um, the Pacific Coast and it will be at noontime here on the East Coast. Um, and they will have some, um, some clips from your album that, that you've graciously shared. We're going to be wrapping up this show very soon, but I want to just ask you, what brings one into a chant versus a song? Because I think so many times people think, okay, music needs to be, a melody and it needs to have lyrics or it needs to have a song-like quality. Tell me about a chant and tell me about what brings you down into that uh, beautiful source within you. The, the nature of the mantras is that they are in Sanskrit, which is this ancient Indian language that's in itself, just the sounds themselves are are transformative and they have an energy and they have a, an effect on our body and our physical system, our, our psych psychological system. So that, that's why the chants are so powerful. And, and Miten and I actually do sing the chants. We do put melodies to the mantras. So we, we, we are enjoying singing them as well, you know, because that's important to me too, that you you just your heart opens because you love the music, you know, and you you love the melody. Mm. And if you want to go deeper, you take up a chant practice and you focus on the repetition, and you you can do it more as the chanting traditional way. So 
but it's so beautiful to to have the music bring you joy, you know, and that's what happens in our concerts and events that everyone comes together sure. to sing, you know, to to breathe together in rhythm, you know, in one in as one whole, and then come to the silence together that the music brings. How beautiful that must be. Um, where are you playing tonight? You said uh, Salt Lake City, did you say? Yes, at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. And then we just make our way all the way to Miami. There's about 20 cities on the way. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I want to um, make sure that I say your website properly. It's uh, D E V A. P R E M A L M I T E N dot com. Did I get that correctly? Perfect. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. Good. <laughs> because um, I do do want people to visit your beautiful website. I have perused through, and I have uh, enjoyed so much learning more about you and um, listening. And uh, as I say, we'll hear a little bit more from you on Wednesday on Harvesting Happiness. Is there a very quick chant that you might, we have about two minutes before we um, leave? Would that be putting you too much on the spot if we had a small chant? No, and it, it, we, definitely we have. And it, I think this is a beautiful one because, Everyone can remember it, and it's okay. uh, just words. It's Om and Shanti, and Shanti means peace. So we're just going to leave your listeners with this okay. very beautiful. Om, Om Shanti, 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 Om. So beautiful. It's very hard after chanting, I think, to come back into conversation. <laughs> we really do need to um, say thank you to Deva Premo and Miten, and we want to encourage you to visit their uh, website, DevaPremelMitten.com. We want to make sure you do visit um, Harvesting Happiness Talk Radio on Wednesday. You'll hear a lot more from them and a lot more about their tour, about their impact um, that they have had on so many people and um, their world tour. Um, you have been to so many countries, and now you're bringing this beautiful joy to us. We want to make sure to say thank you to our uh, Pastor Dave. He has uh, been with us so many times, and I'm hoping will visit us so many more times. Pastor Dave Maser from the Shepherd of the Hill Antelope Valley Parish. We also want to say thanks to Sally and John Johnson uh, from the uh, Cape Cod area. Uh, Sally Ann Johnson has some beautiful quilts that she does uh, provide to the Veterans Administration. And anybody else who wants to do that, I would encourage you to connect with your local um, women's auxiliary from your American Legion. I know the, the gals in our area do a phenomenal job reaching out to the Veterans Hospital. Come back next week. We're going to have someone else that you just won't want to miss. Thanks, Sandra and Doris, for Military Mom Talk Radio. This is Robin Boyd. Have a great week, everyone. 